When when we were out we were out here in March for about three weeks, mm-hmm. laughingly thinking we could ski. Every day we were here, it was twenty degrees colder in Pennsylvania. Really? Oh, it was terrible. They were getting they snowed, carried on. We couldn't buy a flake out here while we were. Oh, here. I know, I know. It's so much terrible. So much to, in the win. Well, the winter here was was beautiful. I mean, we got snow what the week before Christmas. That was it. Yeah, that was it. It oh, snowed it was, one time. We've been here for thirty years now. And it's this was the worst winter I've ever seen. Yeah, was it was it really bad out oh, there? Oh, it was terrible. Ice storms, snowstorms. I mean, well, they, that's right. Boston got hit with all the blizzards this year. Well, not only did they get hit, they set an all time record for snow up there. Yeah, I was. You know, as a matter of fact, I was uh, I was reading something on MSN today, and they I, I I could be wrong on this, but I think there's some areas where there's still snow heaped up with dirt piles mm-hmm. um, by some of these parks. Oh. Or they just dumped. They had to dump so much of it, and the leaves and everything, and the snow still mixed in with it. Uh, they're still getting cold weather up there too. I mean, it's it was it's in the sixties back in Pennsylvania. Right now, it's usually in the hundreds. Yeah, no summer at all. No, I'm a native. I'm from Chicago, and uh, I <clears throat> I watch the Chicago weather, and uh, it's I mean it's not bad, but it's seventy degrees. That's it. It doesn't you know it'll maybe get up to seventy five, seventy six. Uh, the lakes are ice cold you know uh people just i've got some friends that live uh, that have summer homes and they're like you can't even go swimming i mean it's the water's 55 degrees and here it is the middle of july you know uh, and still getting horrific thunderstorms and stuff like that so crazy weather <clears throat> what do the spirits say about the weather <laughs> funny you should ask <laughs> my book that's getting ready to go to the publisher is on uh conspiracies and there's a lot our, uh, it's a written fact that our government has the ability to affect the weather so they either have the ability to affect the weather or not affect the weather so you have to ask the question is would you would they why would you allow a dr- uh, if you can affect the weather why would you allow a drought in California or if you can affect the weather why would you make a drought in California? So I've got some very interesting chapters in my new book that will be out next year. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Where can people get your books now if they want to buy them? Uh, my, my two books are both on Amazon. Okay. <clears throat> Just simply go on Amazon, or you can buy them off my websites. It's however you want. And they're out there, and you'll sign them if people want to sign If you buy them off the website, I sign all the ones that we sell directly. If it goes through Amazon, I never see them. It goes to the publishers selling those. Gotcha. Sounds good. <clears throat> hmm? Oh, bookstores carry them. Yeah, major bookstores. Now, this is uh, – I, I have a very good publisher. The, the new book that's coming out in December, it's – if you go online, you'll see my book is uh, After Life is sold by like 55 different booksellers online. So, gotcha. If you really want it, it's not hard to get it. It's out there. Uh huh. So now you brought in some notes tonight, and we were we, we talked last time when we had you on for a couple hours. We talked about um, uh, <clears throat> the some of these conversations that you've had. Uh, how in the board? And in, in, do you use? I mean, you use that a lot, I assume. Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. Actually, Connie and I are getting very proficient at it ourselves now. So maybe every two or three days we'll check on things, see what's happening. You've had a lot of interesting conversations, it looks like. I have got conversations beyond interesting, yes. We've contacted some amazing people through the years. Uh, I mentioned a conspiracy book. We talked to uh, the spirit of Jack Kennedy. He came through and told me all the facts of the assassination and what happened and how it was conducted, how many shooters there were, and all that good stuff. And, and no, Oswald didn't do it. Will this be? Will this be in your in your new book? Uh, that is, that's in the, the next new book. I have <clears throat> my alien books coming out either December or January, and then the book after that will be the conspiracy book. It's actually ready to go to the publisher now, but it takes about a year. Let's talk about the alien, about aliens. We see these. We always refer to you know aliens. We think about aliens with with uh, flying saucers and the little greys and stuff like that. What's your take on aliens, Barry? I mean, what's uh, are they 
us at a future time? Are they time travelers? Or are they no, just no, they're, they're, they're separate species. They've been here since the time of the dinosaurs. Uh, my book coming out is actually based on interviews where we've had the ability to channel with the spirit of aliens. Uh, we've actually talked to multiple ones now. The, the hurdle that you got to get over is the fact that aliens have the same souls we do and go to the same heaven we do. Now, if you, under, if, if you accept that fact, then if I can channel with a human soul, I can channel with an alien soul. And they worship the same God we do. Uh, my, the, my main guide, my main alien guide, uh, he comes from a planet about the size of Jupiter, has two suns, eight moons. Uh, his average lifespan is about 950 of our years. And he has told me that a long time ago, he actually reincarnated here as a human. And that was part of his soul experience that he has to go through. Now, he passed in 1987. And for some bizarre reason, he's been assigned to me to help me write these books. But he's giving me all the information. And uh, and, uh, there's so much crap online about aliens. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so little that you actually see on the Internet that you can trust. Well, and and I also think, too, that there's a lot of Hollywood sensationalism that's intermixed with it all, too, and you have to get past that. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, it's very little of what you see in the movies is the way it actually is. I mean, he's described their ships to us, uh, their mission. The aliens that come here are actually controlled by a committee a galactic committee, all of the planets in the Milky Way worship the same God. And and the advanced cultures are all governed. They don't kill each other. They get along well. They trade technology. They come here, and they're actually trying to guide us so that humans can advance to the point that they can participate with the advanced cultures in the, in the solar system. Uh, the way I describe it, for the aliens coming here is a lot like us going to the zoo to watch the animals. You know, that's we're we're just not as advanced. We're capable of advancing, and that's part of what they do. They help us to advance, and they, they do this whole process of things. But I mean, I've actually I've physically seen a gray alien. And I felt no fear when I saw it. Was that here recently, or would you consider three weeks recent? Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, he was in our bedroom in the apartment. I woke up, sat up, and looked at him. He looked at me and knocked me right out. I went right back to sleep. And, I mean, you know, I woke up actually thinking, did this take place? You know, it happened so fast. Now, you would honestly think if you saw an alien, it would wake you up, wouldn't it? You'd figure. Uh-huh. But, I mean, I had a clear view of him. I watched him as he looked at me. I saw his eyes, and then I was knocked out right there. So we channeled a couple of weeks ago. Right after it happened, I got on the, the channeling board, called my alien buddy and my spirit in, and I said, did that? Did I actually see a gray alien? Yes. Uh, I said, what was he doing? He said he was looking out for you. He was protecting you. And they're, they're misunderstood. I mean, there's all they, once you understand what's going on around you, you can understand that there's, they do an incredible amount of good. Like Moo told us that they gave us the Salk vaccine, that they gave us the MRI machine, that the MRI machine is similar to what they used on an abduction for studying humans, and they passed on some of the technology. Uh, there's, there's, I, I mean, I've written a whole book on everything that they've done for us. Do you think that Earth is maybe... I don't want to call. And this is going to make, I'll make a bold statement here, but do you think that <clears throat> there are several Earths with several species like us? I mean, because and, and, I, I hear that from a lot of different ufolo- people that talk, you know, openly about 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 ufology and, and aliens, um, how they come to visit Earth and, and they're here and they learn things and they teach us. Is it just us, or are there tons of planets out there that are just like us? No, there's a whole ton of planets out there. There's hundreds of young planets that they that they are helping to adjust and come forward. Because I asked them one time, I said, what do you think of us, of all the wars and all the violence we have? 
And his answer was, he said, well, you're not as bad as some of the other ones of similar age. No, there's young planets, there's old planets, there's mature cultures. And, I mean, we are so deeply involved with the aliens, you have absolutely no idea. But the average guy doesn't see this. The average person, and, and maybe, and I've used this analogy so many times, but I think it's so true, I think so many people are are just used to getting up every day at 8 o'clock. They go to their 9-to-5 job if they're lucky enough to have a 9-to-5 job. They come home, they eat dinner, they drive home in the vehicle that they're going to be paying for the next seven years on, making their car payments. They cut the grass on Saturday, and it, it's a vicious circle. It never stops, and they just don't seem to see outside of that that whirlwind that they're caught up in. No, it's... And when people talk about stuff outside of the whirlwind that they're caught up in, they think you're crazy. Oh, they think I'm crazy. I mean, I can imagine how many people out there are going, boy, that is one crazy idiot talking on that microphone tonight. But I can tell you, you know, I've seen them. Uh, they've told us that both Connie and I have been abducted. And in Connie's instance, she knows exactly when it took place. We were living down in Florida at the time. She dropped me off at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. She's driving up in her car on the turnpike. Next thing she knows, she is, she is two exits ahead of what she remembers. She has, the car has moved 15 miles to which she has absolutely no memory. So that was the time she had the time gap, everything. It was a classic abduction for her. Some, some, Any signs left over from it? or I'm afraid to comment. No, she's fine. <laughs> we, we just celebrated our 50th anniversary, so you got to be a little bit careful about what you say. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, congratulations. Mm. No, I mean, it's just because people are, are curious about it, but so many people, to again, to talk about these subjects, they just they don't want to talk about them. They're, I don't know if they're just deep down inside they're afraid. Yes, um, because it, fear has been instilled to everyone. It's if you you go watch an, how many times do you see a friendly alien on a movie? You know they're they're never friendly. I mean, the, everybody says fear the greys, do all this. They're they're carefully monitored. They actually the committee has actually got to give them a visa to come here to see us. They have strict rules. They can they can only affect so much of what they do. Uh, they're allowed to study us. That's part of the deal that they make with our governments. That's why it's kept a secret. But it's it is what it is. it is you know well actually another question came in for you and said the alien presence does does the alien presence have influence or control over government decision making some some governments are in cooperation it's part of the they keep it quiet and then with the the aliens are allowed to observe and and conduct their little experiments but there are – all the governments of the world have agreed to keep it a secret. And but it seems like that's started leaking, starting to kind of come undone now. Well, what's happening, the veil's coming down. I mean, just the same as with, with the paranormal. More and more people are discovering their sensitivities. With the Internet, people are talking about it. People that have the gifts are now not afraid to talk about it anymore. The, the secrets are coming out. And we're reaching a point – Everybody's carrying a, a camera in their telephone now. When something happens now, they reach in their pocket and take pictures of it. It's you know, 30 years ago, we didn't have cameras we carried with us. So between the communication, yes, it's coming out. And actually, your karma is laid out before you come in. And believe it or not, part of my karma is to write books about this, and that's why they all cooperate and give me all this information. See, I don't know what my karma is, but something tells me that while I don't do it 24-7, and I do enjoy doing this radio program, something tells me that I need to continue to do this. Not one person. Nobody's ever, nobody's ever came to me and told me to do it, but I just know that I need to. And I, and, and, and I have to be honest. I've been very honest with all of my listeners. I get tired of it sometimes. Sometimes I go... You know, it'd be nice to have a Saturday night at home, but I feel that I feel that I need to be here. Hey, I, I'm my place is back in Pennsylvania because I have to teach people. I mean, I'm two thousand miles away from my home, living in a in a small apartment 
when I could be in Park City, Utah, for God's sake. But right. that's where I'm supposed to be. And when the time comes, the message will come that we're able to sell the store and come home. Do you think, both of you, do you think that... Um, do you think that someday we talk about disclosure? I mean, that's the big term now out there. Do you think that someday we, in our lifetime, we are going to see something, the believers, the non-believers, do you think someday we're going to see something that just nobody can dispute? I think we're getting very close to disclosure. The guides have told me all along that the timing will be perfect for my book coming out this winter, either December, January, in that range, my alien book. Uh, They've told us that there's a large wormhole opening up on the West Coast that you'll see an increase in alien travel. So I suspect it's not going to be too long before something happens that that they're not going to be able to keep a secret. Because, I, I mean, that, that's, you know, I mean, as far as disclosure goes, government disclosure, I don't think it'll, I, my, my, I believe, like, uh, if you follow people like Stephen Bassett and, people that are trying to get the governments to come out and, and admit to things. I don't think that's myself. I don't think that's ever going to happen. And the reason, I don't, <clears throat> the reason I don't believe it's going to happen is because there's been too many lies, too many stories, too many cover-ups. And how do you turn around and say, okay, well, by the way, we lied for the last 40 years. I think people in government know that if you come out and say, hey, look, this has been nothing but one huge lie, yeah, there's a lot of people that don't believe in the government today, but, I mean, you'll just see a collapse, you know. <clears throat> and and that's why I think the government will never do it. But I just sometimes wonder if, if we will see something. Will we see that gigantic starship? Will we see something that just everybody sees together and says, yeah, okay, there's, boy, there's we're really small in the scheme of things, and there's more to this. Uh, I don't think we're ready yet, but that will take place when the aliens decide – that everybody's supposed to know about them. At some point, in order to work with them, they're going to have to, everybody's got to be aware of their present to work with them. Right now, we're not aware of them. The, we're, it's not, we're not ready. We're scared of them. But gradually, I think you'll see more and more information where people actually will look forward to it. I mean, in my case, I mean, I've, I've seen them and they don't scare me. It's kind of bizarre, but, you know. Yeah, that's the Hollywood sensationalism, I think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Sky writes in and she says, Barry, um, why why do you think, oh, Pat says, she says, Pat, can you ask Barry why they come to an individual and then they slash aliens stay away? What, I'm, well, I know why they come to me. Okay. Okay. I, I specifically asked the question, why in this, why in the world would you ever pick me for this? The answer was because you are open-minded and have no fear. So, they, but it's been a process. They start with little steps. They lead you along, and they lead you along. And it's it's just like you go from elementary school to college. And now he's telling me things. He's always testing me to see whether I can believe it or not, or whether I fear it. And I don't. I understand it. Go back, ask more questions about it, and that's what they want. And uh, one book that we're working on together right now is a very advanced book on alien information. I've written a chapter on the universality of God. I mean, when I channeled with Moo and we took, we discussed this chapter, he said that he worships the exact same God we do being in the same galaxy. On his planet, God sent his son 4,000 years ago to their planet. On his planet, they call him the wise one. And on his planet, they actually have a Christmas celebration similar to our own where they celebrate the birth of the Son of God. So it's, I mean, it, once, the, once you start to understand and they give you all this incredible detail about what's going on out there, it blows your socks off. I mean, I can't wait to get back on the board. I drive her nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Are there some people that... <clears throat> Are there just some people, just happenstance? I mean, there's six, what, seven billion people on the planet. Are there, obviously, they stay away from a lot of people just because there's so many people. I mean, it's hard to go see everybody. Well, it, they're just switching dimensions on you. I mean, they're, they're some, there's multiple dimensions around us all the time. Yeah. And 
They also have the ability to go invisible. They can adjust the electrons where they where they're invisible to us. Right. Uh, on the the famous crop circle at Stonehenge. I don't know if people have ever seen that. It will actually be on the cover of my book coming out. We're using it. But people actually watched the construction of that crop circle. There were over 100 witnesses pulled off the road and watched this thing, and they could just see this crop circle forming with absolutely nothing on top of it. The ship that they were using to form the crop circle was invisible to them. But you could actually watch that crop circle take place and not see the ship. You could see the dust from from the air that they used to create the circle. And in 20 minutes, one of the most intricate crop circles ever photographed was produced on this field. Yeah. Crop circles are interesting. So you you feel it's a, it's an outline of a ship? No. No. It's, it's, it's actually, well, I asked Moo one night, I said, why in the world do you guys do crop circles? And his answer was, because we love to mess with humans. So... This guy's got a great sense of humor. But he also said they use it to communicate. So there's a, a, the other ships look at that circle, and there's a meaning for them. And it's been going on. I have a, a woodcut from the 1600s in my book that shows a picture of a crop circle. And they called them mower devils in those days. So it's been going on forever. Forever. Well, and there's even, have you ever followed any of uh, Patty Greer's work? She's done all the filming of the crop circles. She goes to, uh, we've had her on the program a couple of times. She goes to the U.K. every year. Mm -hmm. They're more prevalent there this yes. year. And she actually has film of this little white orb thing going berserk all over the place. And in the morning, it's there. Exactly. No, crop circles are very real. I mean, some idiots try to fake them. Yeah. And it's really... If, if they just stay out of it and let people study the circles for what they are, we get a lot out of it. Well, and, and when I hear about these ones that are four or five miles long being faked, I'm like, there's no way you're going to do that in the middle of the night with a flashlight. No. Because some of those crop circles are. They're literally miles and miles long. Oh, they're incredible. You know, I did, I did a lot of... Billies and a piece of plywood's not going to Oh, no. Do that. No, no. I did a lot of... Uh, I ask a lot of questions about crop circles for the book, and I have a big portion of the ch one chapter devoted to it. So it answers all the questions about how they make the crop circles. Interesting. Interesting. So aliens are cool. They're, well, I think so. <clears throat> <laughs> no, um, Moo's great. Moo is, uh, he has blue skin. He stands nine and a half foot tall. Has uh, small eyes. Big mouth. And his, his hands are the same as ours. But his feet are actually another set of hands. So he's just, he looks a little different than we do, but have you seen him physically? I have, I have. Um, but he's a spirit guy. A spirit, yeah. Now what? When I when one of our initial sessions that we had with him, his message to me was: he says, when you're preparing to write, just call me about an hour before you want to write, and I'll actually get into your head. And if I don't like what you're writing, I'll give you an itchy nose or blurry vision. So a couple nights later, I'm writing the closing chapter, and I called on him, and I start writing, and I'm just blowing this chapter out. In like three hours, I write the entire closing chapter for the book, and I can't write that fast. So I, had, I when I finished it, I told, asked Connie, I said, you got to read this thing. She comes over and reads, reads it and says, man, your, work, your writing's really moving up a notch. And I said, I'm not so sure it was all me. So next morning, we woke up early, and... And we decided to go out to this little restaurant and have and have a breakfast there. So she and I are sitting there at breakfast, and we're talking about how incredible this thing was. I thought, I said, I knew he was with me. All of a sudden, out of my left eye, I see this blue flash of light in the chair next to me. And I said, Connie, I've just seen him. He, I mean, he's having breakfast with us, for God's sake. So, I mean, it's, she said, yeah, yeah, and what was in your coffee this morning? <laughs> Two days later, we start to channel. Now, we sometimes we decide to channel by Skype with our friends here in Utah. So Connie and I are sitting in Pennsylvania on Skype. Our friends have the board here in, in Park City. We, we sign on. The very first statement that comes on the board is, Hi from the Blue Flash. 
he let us know that indeed two days earlier he had showed himself to me. So there was no doubt he was there with us. And he's done tons of interactions where we know he's with us. What do you think about books like the Bible? Um, the Bible is one of our best historical sources that we have. We have actually, we actually channeled with Pope Sylvester I, who was the Pope when Constantine selected the books of the Bible back in 325 AD at Nicaea. Uh, he explained to us that there were almost 400 Gospels that were presented, of which Constantine picked 88 books or verses and they were picked for political reasons to solidify his position in the Roman Empire at the time. Many of the Gnostic Gospels, none of them were selected. Uh, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Gospel of St. Peter, uh, Thomas, many, many of the key Gospels were destroyed. By 500 AD, if you preached the Gnostic Gospels, you were put to death. So that entire area of teaching, including Jesus wrote a book of Gospels himself. They were called the Secret Teachings of Jesus. Jesus actually taught reincarnation. So many, many of the books are missing. Now, if you think logically, what you got, you have four of the disciples with books. Right. Um, do you think all of the other disciples didn't write? Didn't write? Uh, Jesus was the greatest philosopher of all time and well-educated, yet there's no specific writings attributed to him directly in the Bible. So the Bible has many flaws in it. Uh, many of the teachings are accurate. Many uh, have been added by man. Uh, the gospel where you stone women for adultery, that was added. Uh, we've, we've channeled with many saints, and we've discussed this in length. One of the books I have on my list is actually to write one on the Lost Gospels, trying to fill in the information by channeling with the saints that lived it. We've channeled with St. Timothy, St. Bartholomew, uh, St. Andrew. So we've actually had conversations with three of the disciples. I mean, I had the chance to actually ask one of the disciples, what was it like to know Jesus? And his answer was, to know Jesus was to know pure love. So, I mean, we've had some incredible experiences in this. It's uh, lots happened in the last ten years. I would say so. Life changing, without a doubt. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. With um, when you when you communicate, uh, this is a question I, I have for you. When you communicate with um, other beings, spirits, do you actually get? intelligent words or you get more pictures more scenarios i mean that's one thing like like with a with some people that have had alien abductions they'll be shown things they'll communicate but they don't communicate like we're talking here they just get a flash they <clears throat> something is 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 put in front of them for that for for a short period of time and, and it's it's kind of shown as boom and then you know it's gone where we kind of talk in specifics. Well, much of the communication is done telepathically. I mean, Moo has the ability to put messages in my mind. I mean, I, I'll, I'll simply know that he said something. Uh, last, we channeled with him a couple of days ago, and he said, uh, I'm going to give you a message in your dreams. I, 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 I don't remember my dreams. I, and I said, you, you know damn well I don't remember my dreams. And he said, you'll remember this one. <laughs> So it hasn't happened yet, but something's going to take place like that. Yeah, I, I know they say some people say that people communicate through dreams and stuff like that. I don't get too many. I, myself, I don't. Some can. I can't. I'm. That's not. I will. I, I will. I, I will wake up with messages in my head that I know were deposited. Yeah. I mean, I, sometimes I I wake up just knowing things. Uh, for instance, in Afterlife, I have a big chapter written from interviews with Ulysses Grant. I woke up with a message that he wanted to talk to us. And a lot of strange stuff was going on. I wake up and I said, Connie, Ulysses Grant wants to talk to us. You know, that was a message that he planted in my head. And what did he have to say? A lot. <laughs> 
5,500 word chapter in my book, Afterlife, What Really Happens on the Other Side. Now, he wanted to come back, and it was a, a very bizarre story. But a friend of ours is actually his reincarnated brother. He had a brother, Orville, that he actually threw out of the out of the White House when he was president because he was in, embezzling money from the Indians. So he basically disowned him. And he wanted to make up with his with the soul that was now in the body of our friend. We didn't know any of this. Um, and Mo, in several ch- channeling sessions, he came in. In one of them, he actually did a full spirit possession of our friend. He went, this guy goes into a trance. I thought he was having a stroke. And he takes his hand and he puts it on the glass on the board and starts spelling this message out himself without any of our help. We're sitting there going, holy crap, what's going on here? But it was it was an amazing session. But Grant wanted, Grant's getting ready to reincarnate. And he needed to use us as a channel to get through so that he could make, a, he did not want to come back without making up with the soul of his brother. But soul families are a big deal. But it, it's a cool chapter. It's it's not like anything I ever imagined I would be participating in. Well, this is some deep stuff, guys. Yeah. It's really, really deep. <laughs> and deep in a good way. I don't say that. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. No, no. I was afraid, but I didn't know where you were no, headed no, there. No, no, no. <laughs> Welcome back to Fringe Radio beautiful Saturday night in Salt Lake City. Barry and his wife are here. Again, it's an honor to have you both here tonight sharing your experiences. I mentioned coming uh, next week, um, I'm going to be in um, Ogden doing a prepper thing. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little talk on, I kind of feel that the preparedness has been, um, fringe radio to me is not all craziness by any means. It's just fringe things that are out there on the fringe that we don't tend to think about um and and i think preparedness falls into that i mean we don't think about putting stuff away and storing stuff we're starting to now a lot of people are uh, but during the commercial break we were talking a little bit about what's on the horizon for us as people of this planet um what's some of your thoughts barry what you what you've heard you mentioned things are most likely going to get bad yeah we've I actually put out a newsletter for my clients, free newsletter, where we put the future predictions. Every once in a while, we'll sit down with the guides and we'll just ask them to predict what's coming in the future for us. Uh, I posted nine months before it happened that the last pope was going to retire. Uh, two Decembers ago, they told me there'd be an earthquake in Puerto Rico, and it happened six weeks later, or six four. Uh, we have a pretty good list of predictions that have come through, have come true. And we have a bunch of predictions that are hanging out there right now. Um, They have been telling us that we're basically in for a decade of turmoil. And with everybody trying to cut everybody else's throat, it's it's starting to really look like that one's coming through. Um, The guides have all told us that bad things are coming. Uh, For almost two years, they've been telling us that a major earthquake was going to hit California within two years. Now, you don't, almost anybody can sit out and say that. But now they're saying that it's going to come in August. So we'll see. But the, the I have it posted online that they're going to, that their major earthquake will come this August. Uh, the drought is going to continue. What they said was, what he told me was, he said that the earthquake will kill, but the real damage will come when they run out of water which is taking place. Um, they've told us that the current Pope will be short-term, and he's already announced he won't finish his term. Uh, the next Pope is supposed to be short-term. Uh, the, the Catholic Church is going to have a lot of problems coming up in the near future. Uh, should go through a reorganization for the better. It's What do you think about you know something I think we're starting to see uh, – the, look at the country of Greece. The banks are still closed. Um, you can't get but, what, $40 a day. I think the media in general is keeping things kind of quiet right now. Of what's oh, really absolutely. Going on over there. Absolutely. I think one of the big things you're seeing, 
I mean, you've got this run on the bank, and yet the run, the prices of precious metals are going down. And it's it's incredible. Price, you know, they're, I think the governments are intentionally depressing the price of precious metals. But, the, no, there's a ton of stuff going on. Uh, they, the guides are very realistic about preparing. I mean, you talk about doing your prepper thing. One night I asked them what I should do to get ready for the turmoil that's coming, and as the guide says, buy ammo. You know, so there, we're going to have to uh, – there's a lot of bad stuff coming, and we better protect ourselves for it. Do you think that this is – now, again, people that I have talked to think some bad things are going to come in September of this year. September is going to be the start, the kickoff of a lot of things. Uh, it's already kicked off. A lot of it has already kicked off that we're seeing. Um, September is going to be bad, but it's going to get a lot worse. It's going to be a lot worse. And, yes, everybody better take care of themselves. They better have a food supply. Um, We asked one night who the first country would be to use an atomic bomb. And the answer was North Korea, which I didn't expect. I thought it was going to come from the Middle East. And uh, he's saying that they're, you know, North Korea is going to use it. And if they do, that's going to create one hell of a mess. <clears throat> one of the biggest things we all have to worry about is they set the bomb off 200 miles over the over the United States. That takes out our electrical grid and basically makes it 1890 again all over. It doesn't necessarily do a ton of destruction on no. the ground, but it, but it, the EMP, the pulse, the EMP pulse. Yeah, the pulse will take out. It'll, you know, it'll be 1890 again for a year. Yeah. So. You got to be. You you have to prepare yourself for bad things that are coming. Now we, uh, I'm writing a chapter on General Patton, and for my conspiracy book. So last week we channeled with General Patton, and he's coming back. So, he's coming back because, and just like the soul of Ulysses Grant's coming back. So all of these great spirits and leaders realize that our country needs help and they're actually being sent back to to, to give the help and they all say in the long run america is going to be fine that uh, god always wins out in the end that's how they describe it but in the interim period you know, you've got to take care of yourself how long do you think this will go on for i'm looking for another decade do you think it'll start very shortly i think it started i think the jade helm thing is yeah, well, that's very real. Yeah, it's very real, and it's, uh, and they've definitely told us that it's to cover up something else, but they won't be specific. Some they'll they'll often say there are things that we can't can't and will not know. And they do it uh, in many instances. They do it to protect my butt. You know, if any of your listeners would be interested in subscribing to my newsletter, you know, go on my websites and send me your email and your name, and I'll put you on for free. And when I get information that's coming, I send it out to all the people just as a service. Well, I, I, like you said, things are already starting to happen, but when do you think, when do you feel they'll take a real toll? I mean, when do you think we'll see something happen? A year from now, two years from now? No, I think March. I think we're going to have a, there's going to be <clears throat> a physical occurrence in March that I think is going to, caused a lot of problems, and it's going to be some triggers coming off of that. Well, hopefully it won't happen. <laughs> but My record on predictions is pretty damn good. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to say it. You know? Well, and people, you know what, in, in people too, as far as preparedness, they need to stock up for stuff. They need to put stuff away. Absolutely. They, they need to. It doesn't, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be the, uh, world Armageddon thing, which it could be, but I mean... No, it's not going to be the World Armageddon. I mean, it's it's not the end of days. I mean, these spirits would not be choosing to reincarnate if, if they thought anything was going to... was well, You couldn't save the Earth at this point. But things are going to get bad, and everybody's going to have to buckle down, learn to love the other one, and get along. When everybody decides to get along, things will get better. As it should be. Yes. As mm-hmm. it should be. Interesting. Who other pe- what other folks have you talked with or communicated with that uh, you found to be interesting? 
I thought JFK was one of the most interesting we ever we talked to. Just down to earth. Uh, told me to call him Jack. You know, when when you're on all of a sudden when you realize you, that you really are in the, in the presence of the spirit of a president of the United States, it's 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 a little overwhelming. So I always ask how we should address them and sure. thank them to go through the whole thing. But no, he was very down to earth. Answered my questions. Uh, I asked him if he slept with Marilyn Monroe. He said yes. You know, he was he was very straightforward with everything we did. And we always test before we move ahead. So when I go into a session with a full list of written questions, so I'll research everything before we ask for the spirit because we have had scammers come through. Really? Yeah, well, yeah, we've had fakers come in, but I, you know, we tie them down. If they don't have the information, they're out of there. So no, one of the first things the guy told us when we started – to channel was that there were scammers on both sides, and just be and another thing they said dying doesn't make you any smarter. Yeah. So it's one one thing that I have heard from from people that have gone through different um, sessions is that there's no judgments made over on the other side. Is that is that true? Well, you have to pay. No, it's not true. When you you if when you injure people on this side. You will have to get, gain their forgiveness on the other side. Right. So no, there's a lower level over there that you do not want to go into an area of nothingness. And what's there? People are there. Souls are there. Sure. Absolutely. Joe Kennedy's there. Who? Jack Kennedy goes. His father Joe is there. Yeah. No. Uh, when we were on with Jack, he said, "No, I don't see my father because he's in the lower level." And Joe Kennedy was a very bad person. Oh yeah, he was. He yeah. Was. And, and uh, there's there's other people, um, Franklin Roosevelt. When we were talking with uh, with General Patton the other night, he told us that Roosevelt was was a very bad man, and he's down there. So it doesn't no matter what power you have on this earth. Once you get over there, you're going to pay. You know, just like Hitler has got to make up to every soul that he harmed. So he is talking about millenniums until they're ever, they're ever going to let him progress enough to come back again. So no, you you will pay. You ju- you just won't see that guy in the red suit running around sticking you in the butt with a with a with a toothpick. It's it's not like that. But you will pay. Is that guy out there? No, not like that. Lucifer is is an energy is an evil energy and is very real but it's the 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 religions tried to think up the concept of fire and brimstone for a fear factor and i've always had trouble understanding why a loving god would have such a a terrible terrible alternative because he's trying to he wants you to move ahead he doesn't want you to spend the rest of your life in a, in a fiery pit. That was thought up basically to scare people into giving money to the churches. Well, you know, and I'm, and I'm not going to go on my spiel about churches because I, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't do that. But um, like I try to tell people, or I try to at least believe them in myself, it's not about that building that you um, go to every Sunday. It's not about that building you donate to. Uh, there's been plenty of groups of people that uh, portray themselves as good in that building and walk out the door and they're the most evilest, nastiest people you've ever met. Uh, it, that's not what it's all about. No, no. And, and people need to get past that. No, I am one of the most spiritual and believing people you will ever meet in your lifetime, but we do not attend a church. Right. We do our own thing. Yep. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I think that's good. I, I really do because... Again, people just get tied up into the sensationalism of religions, and and well, I mean, wars have been fought over religions. You know, some religions oh, yeah. are, are are they're they're <laughs> they're corporations. They're multi billion dollar corporations with magnificent buildings and and you know and power beyond belief. Uh, they're actually little governments to some degree. We help an awful lot of people that come to us by teaching them to know themselves. And to know their own gifts. Yeah. Very true. 
Mm-hmm. We've got about five minutes left. <clears throat> so, Barry, your website, well, again, your store in New Oxford, Golden Lane Art and Antique Gallery, it's open seven days a week. So you, you, even though you're here, there's people back there running your Oh, business. yeah. They're just selling their little hearts out back there, I hope. <laughs> Do, <laughs> doing their investigations. And the, do you do them on a weekly basis? or No, we do. We don't allow anybody to come in and investigate the store. Okay. When when you have the ability to talk to them anytime you want, you don't have to do an investigation. Have people done investigations there? Oh, yeah. yeah but I've stopped it because really? we treat our spirits like the human souls that they are. Right. You see this crap where they're, tre- they're insulting them and doing all this. We're very friendly with them, and for that reason, we can, we can talk to them anytime we want. I can pull a ghost box out and talk to a spirit anytime. It's not an investigation. So, you know, we live with them and treat them just like, like they're our friends, and we tell them they're welcome in the building, which they are, and they stick around. And I mean, I've even had them show up for newspaper reporters. I've let a reporter invest, interview one of my ghosts one time on the ghost box. That was a little unique. But, interesting. Oh, yeah. Interesting. No, we lead a very strange life. No, it's not strange <laughs> at all. Um, and then, of course, you've got your, your books coming out. Uh, you've got some books out. Uh, can they get in the, and they link here off of your website, which is ghostsofgoldenlane.com. Yeah, that's one, but... Um, if you want to, if you're interested in the predictions, okay. I would suggest that you go to spiritspredict.com. That's spiritspredict.com. All the links are on. You go to the other sites, but there you will see a list of the predictions that have come true and the ones that are outstanding. And if you feel like you want my newsletter, uh, click it in, and I'll put you on the list, and we'll try to keep you updated on what's happening around you. Very interesting. What a lot on this site. A lot on this site. <laughs> so you're going to continue with the the store for a while, then? And... Yeah, as long as as long as we have a mission back there, and we can help people, and we can train people, we'll stay back. But just as soon as that little mission is over, there's going to be like a jet stream coming back to Park City. <laughs> we cannot wait to get home again. Get home, but you feel that for right now you need to be there. It's well, this is the path I've chosen. This is the path that they've chosen for us, and it's what we have to do. Well, that's very good. Well, again, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, to stop by here tonight and uh, sharing your work. And it's awe-inspiring and touching. And, and uh, people need to people need to, as I always preach, keep your eyes open, be forward-thinking, be open about things. Uh, don't always take what has been told. You know, don't. Everybody seems to. You know, this is how it was, and this is how it's going to be, and and, and I think people need to, to continually uh, open up, uh, open up their their, their minds and eyes, and, and look about, look look past things. Most people have no clue what's going on around them. Well, and again, with with you with what you offer and with what you do, um, this is going to be good. It'll yeah. open people's minds. Yeah, I think they'll enjoy the Alien book when it comes out this year. When's, and that's going to be out? I'm, I, I'm thinking December, January. It's at the publishers. They've done the, they've done the cover. It's coming out in hardcover. They thought enough of it to do that. So Very good, very good. But Afterlife, what really have the book that's out now lays a great foundation to understand what we do and how, to move a, and how we move ahead in the other books. So people need to pick that one up. I Again, would suggest it. Spiritspredict.com, a great looking site. Barry, Connie, thank you so much for being here tonight. It was an honor to have you on. And uh, we'll have to get you. I see you got a uh, thing here with Schrader. We'll have to get you this link so you can put this on there and uh, let people uh, let people hear about it. Oh, we'll do it. Of and course. We'd love to have you back on again. Hey, whenever you want. Let's plan on it again. 